Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is a follow-up to the previous episode where we learned how to read from a file a maze structure that looks something like, not like that, nope, like, dang it, this. <laughs> this is our maze structure. So this is the number of rows, and these are each one of the rows, and then this is our starting position. This is the Y coordinate, and this is the X coordinate. In this episode, we're going to learn how to build upon this to have multiple mazes within this text file and to solve all of them or say if each one is solvable or whatever you want to do. Now I think you'll find that the easiest way to expand upon an application is to refactor it so that it is more easily read and more organized. So right now when you open our maze solver we have a bunch of crap just floating around in our main method and it makes me want to barf. I don't like it because it's, it seems like down here, we have really clear code of what we're trying to do. We go through each one of the mazes and we check if they're solvable and if they are, it says you won, otherwise it says no path. That seems nice, but all of this, this seems like an unorganized mess that could be extracted into its own method. And then once we have that own, its own method, we could just call it and building it in a loop or whatever we want to do would be a whole lot easier that way. So that's what I'm going to do first. So instead of si assigning a new array list, an empty array list here and just adding elements to it, what we're going to do is we're going to basically create a method to return an array list. So we're going to get the mazes variable from a method call. And that's going to be called, hmm, what do I want to call this? Hmm read mazes all right so this doesn't exist yet obviously so let's create method and that's going to pop down at the bottom somewhere and we're going to take all of this code that we have to read all the mazes right now it's only reading one maze but we're going to take that cut it so that we just have this method call and this is the ideal end result right it's so much easier to read and it's so much easier to debug because you can go to read mazes and debug that individual method rather than having to worry about everything before and after. So let's go to read mazes and build that out. So it's right here. So let's just paste this in here. All right, so what we're gonna do in, inside of here is we're going to create a, a new array list to return. So similar to how we have up here, array list mazes, equals whatever, we're gonna do that again in here. So array list mazes equals new array list maze, of type maze. And this needs to be of type maze. All right, so once we have this, this array list, we can return that at the end. So we just say return mazes, and that maze list that we just created will be returned to this variable here, which we can then use down here. The basics of methods, if that's hard to understand, you can check out my Java videos on methods. But it should work. There's just a couple of things we're gonna have to do. We have an error here. We have to have an add throws declaration or do some file exception handling, which we might talk about in an upcoming episode. All right, so now let's run it and see if it works. All right, so it seems we have refactored our code, but now it is much cleaner. We have an individual method to read a particular maze, just one maze, but now we need to modify it to read two mazes or unlimited mazes. What do we do now? Well, first off, let's modify the input. So this is one maze. What if we copied this and just pasted it down below? And that could be our format, right? Maybe we could even put a space in there. Yeah, so it's easier to read. So we'll just start with two mazes like so and go back to the maze solver application. We're going to want to create two mazes so that can indicate where to start this loop, right? We want to say new maze twice. So we need to put that inside of a loop. So we can say while create the loop body and we're going to take all this code and paste this inside of the while loop. And then all we have to do for the while condition is Actually, that's where we're going to need the scanner. So maybe this stuff isn't organized quite so well. We will want to take this, put it down here or even up here. And the scanner itself, we're gonna put on the outside of the while loop. 
and then after the while loop, we can say in dot close because we're going to be done with that scanner at that point. Now for the condition of the while loop, we're going to say in dot has next. And this will evaluate to true if there's still more content to be read from the mazes.txt file. So in theory, the first iteration, we create a new maze, get all that information from the text file and add that maze to the maze list. Then the second iteration, we do it again, we haven't reopened the file, so it's going to continue right where it was, so it'll continue on the, the next segment. Now we have to be careful here with the, the little space we have here. This could cause an issue. You'll just want to make sure you keep in mind that that's going to be there and read it. And also for the last one, you want to make sure you either don't try to read a space that's not there or just always make sure there is a space there. Just be consistent, whatever you do, and be very specific about what you're trying to do with the text file. So inside of Maze Solver, we'll just at the end of that, the last read, which looks like this next line is the last one. Right after that, we're just going to read that space and just toss it out essentially. So we'll just say in dot next line. And this, oh, oh, Eclipse, I'm gonna sue you if you don't fix that. I hate that. I mean, I guess, whatever. Maybe I'm doing something to cause that to happen, but it should just pop up as next line. So this is to toss the extra space. So since the last iteration that's going to execute, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we have a space there on the last one as well. And save your text file so it's up to date. And now let's see if it works. Run, and it doesn't work. Oh yeah, I love that feeling. <sighs> maybe, maybe we can put some debugging. So let's, let's go to this next line and put a, a breakpoint there. Make sure there's no other breakpoints in here. Unbreakpoint that one. All right, let's debug. So this is the first iteration. We'll just go over that one. And that one seemed to work. Uh, next iteration. Go through all these things, seems to be working. Goes through all the rows six times there. Sets the starting point, and I'm imagining this is where the exception comes from. We step over, exception. Okay, no, li no line found. So for some reason, this, this last one is not being acknowledged. All right, I got one idea. I'm gonna put an extra space there run okay i think i figured it out inside of the text file this is just a new line character which brings us down to the next line same here new line character so we're basically ignoring that new line character and ignoring that new line character so in order for that to be a new line character i had to go down one line i don't really like that though so Maybe there's something else we can do. Maybe just a hyphen. Let's try that. And then inside of here, we'll just keep next line there. Execute, and that works even better. So that was confusing, but I think I got it figured out. I just put a character there instead of a new line, and it's a, it's a little bit easier to understand because the new lines are invisible, sort of, so. Maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about, probably. But now in our console, you can see it actually executes twice. This is the first one, and this was the second one. So now you should be able to go into your mazes.txt and modify some stuff. Just make sure you keep the formatting right. So let's try three rows. Update this six to a three, and let's say our destination is here and we start here, so that would be y0, x0. And it's gonna go right, right, and it'll eventually get down to the two, somehow. All right, let's try it. All right, so the first one, that one worked, and here's the path it took for the second one. It goes right, right, down, down, left, left, and then it says you won. 
awesome. So that's how you can get multiple mazes from input and solve them all. Now what I think a good test for you guys would be to figure out how to modify this code so that it, it, it prints out the final path to get to the destination. So you're gonna have to look back at our stack we created, figure out how to do that, and let me know if you guys figure out the solution. Right now it is presenting a path, but sometimes it'll, it'll back up too. All right, so I modified the maze. This one, it's gonna go down first and then it's gonna go back up because that's not gonna work. See, it says move down and then it says moved back. So basically, how can you present the path without having the, the moved back? Because that's showing an incorrect path. We just wanna ignore that. So that's your challenge. I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode because I think we're gonna be getting into something a little bit new and I'm pretty excited. Peace out and subscribe.